Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How great and mighty is our God tonight. I don't think that there is a word in our English vocabulary that can fully describe how great and wonderful he is tonight. Let's give him another great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. How great thou art tonight, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we're, we're without words. Hallelujah. We don't know how to describe you. We don't know what to say. Hallelujah. We've used up all of our vocabulary. That's not enough, God. Amen. That's not enough. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 10,000. 10,000 praises to you tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. Turn around and give somebody a big thumbs up tonight. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God. Glad to see all of you tonight in God's house on this Wednesday night. We're going to pray, amen, tonight for the sick and for the shut-ins, for those not able to come to church tonight for whatever reason. Sister Jeanette Morrell, my sister-in-law, called this evening for prayer. Hallelujah. She fell uh, sometime last week. She fell sometime last week toward the weekend, I think. And uh, she went, she finally got around to getting to the doctor today. And she's got several broken ribs. So she's in a lot of pain. Amen. She wanted to come to church tonight. Amen. And she, she was really wanting us to pray that she'll be able to come to church uh, this coming Sunday. Praise God. So let's pray that she'll be able to come to church. That God will touch her. And she'll be able to come to church next Sunday. Praise God. So, hallelujah. Let's pray for her. Let's pray for Samantha. She started her new treatments this week. And uh, hallelujah. Let's just pray that everything goes well with that. And uh, praise God. Let's just lift her up in prayer and believe God that he's going to move for her. Let's throw the names on the screen tonight. Amen. If you need to, uh, amen, to keep your eyes open to pray for these names tonight. Hallelujah. Is there any needs in the house tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody with a prayer request here tonight? Praise God. God sees those hands tonight. He knows what that need is. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we come before your throne of grace. God, ask your Lord to touch Sister Jeanette tonight. God, it's her desire. God, it's her heartfelt desire to be in your house tonight. Hallelujah. God, but unable to come tonight, God, she certainly wants to be here this coming Sunday, God. So, Lord, you got several days to help her, several days to help her body mend and heal, God, from those broken ribs, God, so that she can be in church this coming Sunday, God. We are agreeing with her, God, amen, on that prayer request, God, that's going to touch her, hallelujah, and heal her, God. Lord, touch Sister Samantha tonight, God, hallelujah, God, and the treatments that she is taking, God. Lord, we just pray, God, for her strength, God, her stamina, God, hallelujah, God, that she can withstand these treatments, God, and get the help that she needs. God, we're praying for Brother Larry Clark tonight, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that you would touch him and heal him tonight, God, of the cancer that they say that he has in his body tonight, God. Hallelujah, God. Move for Brother Larry Clark tonight, God. Jesus, Jesus, thank we pray, God. We join together right now, God, over the hands that were lifted in the service representing a need. Uh, an individual, a family member, God, that needs prayer. Hallelujah, God. I pray together with those that are here tonight, God. Hallelujah. We're praying with these names, with these names uh, representing loved ones and family members, God. Friends, relatives, co-workers, God. Hallelujah. God, we pray for these names on our screen here tonight, God. Hallelujah, God, that you would touch and heal and be save and deliver, God, these folks here tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Oh, we worship you tonight, God. Praise you, God, for the blood that was shed on Calvary, God, for the healing of our bodies, God, for the healing of our nation, God. We not only pray for individuals tonight, God, hallelujah, but God, we pray for our nation tonight, God, that is rocking and reeling tonight, God. Under the pressures, God, of this pandemic, God, I pray, God, Lord, that you would bring us deliverance and healing. God, every individual out there, God, that has this virus right now, God, I curse that virus from their bodies. God, I claim victory for them tonight, God. Raise them up out of that sickness.
sickness in uh, Lord, just allow them, God, to return back to normal life, God. God, they want to be with their families. They want to be with their friends. They want to be at church, God. They want to go to work, God. They want to live their lives in a normal way. God, we're praying tonight, God, for victory over this coronavirus. Hallelujah, God. We're praying, God, that you put a hedge around every saint of God in this church tonight. Every member of this church, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we're praying a hedge of protection around us, God. Hallelujah, God, as we begin going about our normal lives again, God. Hallelujah. God, keep it from us, God. Don't let it come nigh our dwelling places, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship God. Oh, never disconnected tonight. Hallelujah. Because you want to be here, hallelujah. Just would come quickly this evening. Praise God. We'll give you an opportunity to give. Praise the Lord. It's unto the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for your giving again tonight. Thank you for our visitors that are here. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody here tonight on this Wednesday night. Hump day midweek. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you for praying. Hallelujah. For the church family during this pandemic situation. Hallelujah. I haven't heard of anybody that is connected to this church that has gotten that virus. I hadn't heard of anybody. If they, ha if they have gotten it, they kept it secret from me. So I hadn't heard of anybody within the church family that has come down with that coronavirus. So we're thankful for that. Hallelujah. And grateful for that. We just want God to keep it that way, right? We want God to keep us all safe and protected and Hallelujah, and uh, keep that stuff away from our away from our homes and families tonight. Praise God. So, hallelujah. As they sing a song tonight, if you would kindly, amen, stand tonight wherever you are and come and uh, give your offering to the Lord tonight. Praise God. Go ahead. Believe that. Hallelujah. 
nothing that we face in life changes the nature of God. Praise God. Nothing that we face or go through changes the nature of God. He is who He is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's good today. He'll be good tomorrow. He's good yesterday. He'll be good next year. He'll be good next week. Praise God. He's going to be good to His people. Amen. No matter what they're facing, no matter what they're going through, He's going to be good to us. He is our keeper tonight. He keeps us through our trials. He keeps us through the valleys. He keeps us through our hardships. Praise God. He wraps His arms around us and upholds us when we don't have the energy to stand or the strength to stand ourselves. Praise God. Well, uh, let's look to the Word of the Lord just a little while here tonight. In Psalms chapter 36. Psalms chapter 36. I'm going to read one verse of Scripture and let you be seated. I know some of you work hard today. But I'm going to, re I'm going to read on down after you're seated. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God in his eyes. You can be seated. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit, and he left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. The righteous is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are great deep. O Lord, thou preserveth man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thine house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall, be, shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of the pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are, there are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Praise God. Psalms chapter 36, Bible study night. I guess on Bible study night, you're supposed to read a short chapter and then discuss it, right? So that's what we're going to do here tonight. Hallelujah. I just read 12 verses of an entire psalm or chapter of a psalm tonight. Praise God. And we're going to talk about it just a little bit. Praise God. In this chapter, David gives descriptions of two different classes of people tonight. Praise God. In verses 1 through 4, he describes the wicked at heart. Hallelujah. In verses 5 through 10, he describes the upright in heart or at heart. In verse 11 and verse 12, he finishes off this psalm, amen, with a prayer of defense against the wicked. Praise God. Hallelujah. So David, David said this basically, if I can put it in my own words tonight. When I see what the wicked do, when I witness their, when I witness their transgressions, my heart tells me that there is no fear of God in their eyes. Praise God. The wicked are deceived. They are evil. They are deceptive. They are hateful. They, their mindset is on evil both day and night. They love sin. The wicked love sin. They love ungodliness. Praise God. Now, with that description of the wicked being thrown out there tonight, I'm sure that uh, probably everybody in here know somebody that could fit that description tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. We all probably, we, some of us may know a lot of people that would fit that description. Praise God. People that have no fear of God, have no respect of God. They don't even think about God. Amen. It's not their desire, amen, to live for God or please God or respect Him in any way whatsoever in the way that they live. So we all know people that 
live their lives that way, alienated from God, separated from God through sin and ungodly acts. Praise God. Hallelujah. People, amen, who are consumed with evil, amen. And then David reminds himself in verses 5 through 7 that God is merciful, God is righteous, that God is faithful, amen, that God preserveth both man and beast, hallelujah. And then he says, how excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Hallelujah. He's kind of making comparisons here, hallelujah, what he's seeing out there among the wicked and the ungodly, amen, and God himself, amen. He lets us, he reminds us that God is merciful, God is faithful, God is righteousness, hallelujah, and that if you and I are going to be preserved, we're going to be preserved because, amen, of his preservation power tonight. God will preserve his church, hallelujah, how excellent is our loving kindness, O God. He said, therefore, the children of man can put their trust. The children of men can put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. David was reminding himself of God's goodness. Why? Why is David reminding himself of God's goodness? I'll tell you why. Because what he had seen with his eyes was affecting him. What he had seen was with his eyes was, amen, trying to discourage him. Praise God. Trying to have an effect on him. So David begins to remind himself, amen, of the loving kindness of God and the mercy and the faithfulness of God, amen, as he's talking here, amen, in this, uh, in this psalm tonight. Praise God. Right here tonight, we need to remind ourselves that nothing that we see will ever change who God is and what God is. Hallelujah, it doesn't matter what we see go on in this world. It doesn't matter what we see going on in politicians and, uh, amen, the political realm. None of that stuff is going to change who God is. God is faithful. God is merciful. God is full of loving kindness tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Therefore, we need to keep on trusting Him, right? Amen. Right here in the middle of perilous times, amen, right here in the midst of wicked times and perilous times, dangerous times hallelujah we need to remind ourselves on a daily basis we got to keep on trusting in him hallelujah we can't let what we see affect our heart we can't let what we hear affect our heart tonight hallelujah we just got to keep on trusting in the lord right praise god now verse eight is what really got my attention tonight praise god verse eight says they speaking of who they that trust in the in, in the in the shadow of his wings they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Praise God. Hallelujah. They who? The godly. Amen. The righteous, the upright in heart. Praise God is who he's referring to there when he said they. Hallelujah. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Well, whose house? God's house tonight. Hallelujah. Where, where are we going to find our satisfaction at? Hallelujah. Well, David said they, they, the upright, the righteous, the godly, are going to find their satisfaction in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Fatness in Hebrew means abundance. The word fatness in Hebrew means abundance tonight. Hallelujah. We used to sing a song, amen, that says, come and dine, come and dine. Amen. Everybody, or a lot of people like to change that today and sing it this way. Come and snack, come and snack. Hallelujah. We need to go back to singing that old song, Come and Dine. The Master calleth, Come and Dine. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. It's Come and Dine time tonight. Time tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Fatness in Hebrew means abundance. The fatty residue of the ashes of many sacrifices. Praise God. Now, I could go into how that fatty residue got mixed with the ashes of the sacrifices on that brazen altar. Amen. But it's kind of a gross kind of thing to think about on a Wednesday night, so I don't want to bore you with all of the details of how the fatty residue got mixed with the ashes. Amen. At the brazen altar there. Praise God. But when David, amen, is talking about fatness here tonight, he's talking about when I see the fat residue, amen, of the many sacrifices that have been offered in the house of God, I realize that there is an abundance in God's house. I realize there's an abundance in God's house. Hallelujah. 
Amen. David reminded himself that when I see the residue of those ashes, I understand that there's a, an abundance in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever. Well, let me put it this way. Now that we have moved in our, in our time, amen, we've moved past animal sacrifices. Somebody say, thank God. We don't have to own turtle doves and lambs and bullocks and all these other things and sheep and uh, goats and all those other things that they had to sacrifice in the Old Testament. Praise God. Hallelujah. So since we have moved past, amen, animal sacrifice, amen, wherever there is fatness in God's house today, hallelujah, let's fast forward it to today, amen, whenever there is fatness in God's house, whenever there is abundance in God's house, amen, it is because there is an abundance of prayer in God's house, there's abundance of praise in God's house, there's an abundance of preaching in God's house, there's an abundance of miracles and healings and signs and wonders in God's house. There's an abundance of help in God's house. Amen. Because somebody, somebody contributed to that service. Coming to church is a lot like, I don't know how to call it. I don't even, I don't even know if this would be the right term, amen, to say. But coming to church is a lot like a potluck dinner. In a potluck dinner, everybody brings their part. Everybody prepares something. Everybody cooks something. Everybody fixes something. Amen. And they just bring it all together and look around and, amen, and just see what all has been brought. And then they enjoy that meal together, right? I like potluck dinners. Hallelujah. Amen. I like to try different kind of food and different kind of cooking and how different Folks prepare meals different ways. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. My soul can be satisfied with the fatness of God's house tonight. Listen, a church can be a place of fatness. A church can be a place of fatness. Or it can be a place of leanness. Hallelujah. Amen. All through the scriptures, amen, Fatness and leanness is contra contrasted, amen, in the Word of God. In Genesis chapter 41, amen, Pharaoh had a dream. Amen. They finally found the dreamer down there in prison. Amen. Who could interpret the dream? Uh, his name was Joseph. They called him up before Pharaoh. Pharaoh couldn't even remember the dream that he had. He just knew he had a dream, and it bugged him, and it tormented him. They called Joseph up out of prison. He said, oh, Pharaoh, let me tell you what you dreamed. Amen. In your dream, you saw, amen, five or seven Fatted calves, or fatted kind is what he calls it. Simply means cows. Hey Amen. You saw seven fat cows, and you saw seven lean cows. Hey Amen. And in that story in Genesis chapter 41, hey Amen, Joseph goes on to explain to Pharaoh the seven fat cows, hey Amen, represent seven years of plenty, seven years of abundance, seven years, hey Amen, of crops, hey Amen, and fruits and vegetables and everything just coming in in a great abundance. And then the seven lean cows represent seven years of famine. Praise God. So it is in our churches today. Hallelujah. In our churches today, it can be either feast or famine. Hallelujah. It can be either fatness or leanness. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that, you know, and we've got something to do with all of this tonight. Praise God. The 12 spies came back from Canaan and said, Surely the land floweth with milk and honey, and surely it is a place of abundance. Amen. What they were basically saying, amen, was that it was a place of fatness where everybody could be satisfied. Joshua and Caleb said, let's go get it now. They said, no, nah, we can't get it. We can't have it. Praise God. My question to you tonight is, who wants the fatness of God? Hallelujah. In this house tonight, amen, who wants the fatness of God? Or who's going to be satisfied with leanness? 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. I want the fatness of God, and I want it right now. Hallelujah. You hear me tonight? I'm going to tell you where I stand. Amen. I want the fatness of God, and I want it right now. Hallelujah. Amen. I want it tonight. I want it in this service. I want it in every service. Amen. I want it every time I come to church. I want to hear the master say, come and dine. And I want to pull up to the master's table. Amen. And I want to eat till I am full. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't go to church to eat pistachio salad with a little bit of cool whip on top of it. You might like pistachio salad with a little bit of cool whip on top of it. But that ain't why I go to church to eat that kind of stuff. Huh? Amen. I don't go to church to eat appetizers and hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. When I go out to eat at a restaurant, very seldom will I order an appetizer. Hallelujah. Because I don't want to get filled up on the appetizer. I want the main, I want the real stuff. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, when I go out with a bunch of preachers and I, I you know, and I kind of detect that they would like to have some appetizers, I'll buy them an appetizer or two or whatever. Amen. I feel like that it would take to satisfy them, but very rarely, Amen. Will I consume, Amen, much of those appetizers? Praise God, because hey, Amen. I don't want to get filled up, Amen, on appetizers, on some real food. Amen. I ain't on no spiritual diet tonight. Hallelujah. I'm not on no spiritual diet tonight. Hallelujah. I, amen. I want some meat and bread. Hallelujah. You hear me tonight. Amen. When I come to church, I want some meat. Amen. And I want some bread. Hallelujah. I want a meal. Amen. I want God to feed me. Amen. Hallelujah. Do, 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 do we want to attend a fat church where there is plenty? Or do we want to, amen, attend a skinny church where you... Don't ever get enough. In skinny churches, you don't ever get enough. Huh? You might get an hors d'oeuvre or a little appetizer or a little 15-minute sermonette snack. Hallelujah. I want the man of God to get in the pulpit and just preach. Hallelujah. I don't want him to think about, amen, just, just preach, preach, amen, just preach to me. Hallelujah. Oh, I ain't going to be up here long tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Skinny folks irritate me. Skinny folks. Oh, well, let me put it this way because I know we got a lot of skinny folks in this house. You don't irritate me. Uh, well, it's what you have to do to stay skinny that irritates me. How about that? Hallelujah. You know, uh, skinny folks, they, they kind of irritate me, especially spiritually skinny folks. Spiritually skinny folks irritate me. They come to church with leaving on their mind. They come to church... With leaving, they walk in the door thinking about leaving, huh? Hallelujah, Amen. They, they, I, you know, I, I've had, I've had skinny folk visitors come to our church, Amen. I've watched them when they come through the door. They come to the door looking for the clock on the wall. They're not looking for the altar. They're not looking for the pulpit. They're not looking for the preacher. They're not. They're looking for the clock on the wall. Amen. Them folks are skinny folks. Hallelujah. They constantly watch the clock. Amen. Constantly fidget. Amen. Throughout the service. Amen. Wanting the service. Amen. To hurry up and end. I hope that ain't you tonight. Because we ain't got no clock on the wall. Huh? Woo. I hope we don't ever put a clock on these walls. We're here to eat. Where to eat? Anybody ever went to eat at the buffet with Mr. and Mrs. Skinny? You ever went to the buffet with Mr. and Miss Skinny? Man, when I go to a buffet, I go to that eat. So I grab a plate and I grab a spoon, I grab a fork, I grab heavy, I go to the buffet. But not Mr. and Mrs. Skinny. I mean, I go to the buffet and come right back to the table, and start eating. I may sit down and wait a couple of minutes. 
rest of the folks get back, if they don't hurry and get back, I'll say my own prayer and start eating. I know that may be rude, but that's just the way I am. Hallelujah. I don't want my food to get cold, so I get my plate, I get the table, I, you know, I get ready, and I'll wait a couple of minutes. Sometimes, <laughs> not all the time, sometimes I'll wait a couple of minutes. But Mr. and Mrs. Skinny, they'll walk up to the buffet, and they'll spend about 15 minutes walking around and just walking around, eyeing everything, looking at everything, examining everything. And they'll spend about 15 minutes. I done, listen, by their time they done spent 15 minutes at the buffet, I done ate one whole plate full of food. Hallelujah. And then they'll come back to the table after spending about 15 minutes around the buffet. Amen. And they got a little, little of nothing on their plate. Evidently, amen, they couldn't find it. A whole lot that they liked at the buffet, or either they don't eat meat or they don't eat bread. Amen. They come back with just a little bitty, teeny, teeny bit of salad and a little bitty bowl of fruit. Salad and fruit. And I look at them and I think in my mind, I ain't never said this to nobody. I'm, I've come close a few times. Maybe I have said it to a couple of folks. I don't know. Hey, man, I'm sitting there thinking that you spent $15.95 to eat at this here buffet. And you're going to eat a little bit of salad and a little bit of fruit? What's wrong with you? And I'm headed back to the buffet for my second plate full. I'm telling you tonight, hallelujah. Hey, man, folks that don't eat. Well, I guess they just won't feel very, very comfortable around me tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, uh, don't get mad at me tonight if you're here and you're, you're you know, you're kind of on the skinny side tonight. I, you know, if you want to be skinny, then you got to eat so that you can be skinny. You got to, you got to eat mini meals. Mini meals. Praise God. A lot of folks went on a diet through this pandemic, and I guess you're eating mini meals right now. M I N N I E. Not M A N Y, meaning. So if you're going to be skinny, you got to eat so that you can be skinny. You need to go to TripAdvisor, and it will give you directions to all of the little mini meal restaurants that are springing up all over this planet. What all these little mini meal restaurants springing up? I mean, they take pride in in serving portions of food about that big. They're going to come and bring me my meal, and they're going to bring me three little dabs of something on my plate. I'm liable to get mad at them and throw the plate at them. Hallelujah. I don't want to go to no mini meal restaurant. Hallelujah. And spend a bunch of money for nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. That way, you don't have to be intimidated. Just, just eat to be skinny. Eat to stay small. I'm not. I'm not telling you not to try to. I know smaller people are probably in better health than larger people. (laughs) So you eat mini meals to stay skinny. So you don't have to be intimidated by the buffet because you don't really have to go to the buffet just because I go to the buffet. (laughs) But just don't let your skinny mentality become your spiritual skinny mentality or your skinny spirituality. Don't let your wanting to stay small and little, and ain't nothing wrong with all that. I need to probably lose another. (laughs) Just don't let your skinny mentality become your skinny spirituality. We all contribute. Listen. We all contribute to the fatness or the leanness of God's house. Praise God. If everybody will pray, if everybody will worship, if everybody will sing, if everybody will give, amen, if everybody will get behind the preacher and help him preach, amen, this house, amen, can be a fat house, amen, full of the abundance of God, amen, that we can enjoy every time we come to church. We don't have to have a dead church service. We don't have to have an off night, an off service. Hallelujah. My God, we can have whatever we want here tonight. Hallelujah. 
Oh, it's midweek service. You got to calm down, preacher. You got to chill out tonight. My God. Amen. Why? We're at the buffet. Hallelujah. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's dine. Amen. Let's enjoy what God has for us here tonight. Amen. If we'll all contribute to this house, this can be a fat house, a house of abundance. Amen. Where more and more people can come and get their needs met. See, people come to church, or a lot of people come to church for the first time because, well, they've been invited to church. Amen. But they come to see what all the hoopla is about. You know, they hear about how we praise and worship God, shout and dance and run the aisles. And a lot of times people will come just to check us out, see what all the hoot laws about. Praise God. But they're in the middle of, amen, our singing. Amen. In the middle of a choir singing or the praise team singing or, amen, maybe the preaching sometimes. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God begins to deal with their heart. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God begins to talk to them while they're sitting on our church pews about, amen, things that maybe are not quite right in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. And those people, while they come under conviction, amen, for the Spirit of God can get their needs met. Amen. Those folks don't have to leave the church house. Amen. Amen, the same way that they came. Amen, if we can supply them, amen, with their needs being met. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. I want the house of God to be a house of abundance where more people can come and get their needs met. Praise God. That's my kind of church tonight. Hallelujah, I don't go to church just to waste time. I don't go to church just to see you and have you see me. Hallelujah, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you are here tonight and I see you here tonight. Amen, but I come to eat. I come to fellowship with you and God. Hallelujah. Amen. I come to pray. I came to sing. I came to worship. I came to preach tonight. Hallelujah. But what happens if nobody prays? What happens if nobody worships? What happens if nobody sings or gives or listens when the man of God's up there preaching? What happens if nobody contributes? The house of abundance and the house of fatness becomes a house of leanness. We'll end up with leanness. Leanness in Hebrew. <laughs> uh, is the word rajay. Rajay. Kind of sounds like a little French word to me. Rajay means famished. So maybe, guys, next time you come home from work and you're starving to death and you come in the kitchen and your wife don't have supper on the table, maybe you need to nudge up by next to her and say, Honey, I am Rajay tonight. You might get slapped because she thinks you come up with some kind of sexy word or something to say to her. You might get slapped upside the head. Amen. But all you're saying is, Honey, I wish dinner was on the table right now. <laughs> oh, thank God we can have a little bit of fun in the house of God, right? I'm going to walk up to my wife in the near future and say, Honey, I'm Raw Jay. Hallelujah. I'm famished. She's over there trying to figure out what I'm talking about. I want to go to church. To whether there are five men, women, and children, or if they are 5,000 men, women, and children, praise God, I want to go to a church where they all can get fed. I want to go to a church where they can not only all get fed, but they can all get full. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, man, you're not going to snack around here and get full. you got to come in here and eat. Hallelujah. Hey, man, I want you to get fed. I want you to get full. And I want you to take some home with you tonight. Hallelujah. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. Hallelujah. Take some leftovers home. Hey, take something away from the house of God. Hey, man, that you can enjoy tomorrow. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I can eat leftovers. My family got together on Monday, and we had our Memorial Day service or Memorial Day, service, Memorial Day dinner together as a family. And we, everybody cooked so good, so good. We had a whole lot of leftovers. 
And uh, I came home for dinner today, and my wife heated up a whole bunch of them leftovers. And I think I, may, I, I think I ate more of the leftovers today than I did on Memorial Day when we was all there as a family. I don't know if I was afraid she was going to get more food than I got or, or what it was. But, man, I, was, I, was, I, I ate a bait of, uh, you know, we had, we had baked potatoes. We had corn on the cob. Hey, man, we had uh, green beans. We had chicken. We had all kinds of good stuff there today. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. So uh, uh, that's, I, w- I want to go to the house of God and get fed. I want to get full. I want to take something home with me tonight. Praise God. Look at somebody and ask them, do you want a to-go box? Do you want a to-go box? <laughs> you can ask that if you go to a church, amen, a church house that's full of fatness. You can ask, do you want a to-go box? If you can go, amen, if you go to, uh, to the house of God and your, your house of God is a house of abundance, amen, you can ask that if there's plenty in the house of God to go around, amen, and some left over, do you want a to-go box? Hallelujah. Next time somebody asks you, how was church today? You used to tell them, oh, it was good. The preacher fed me a plenty, and I took some home with me. Come on now. Hallelujah. You should have been there. You could have got some for yourself. Hallelujah. David said, I've seen those that trust in God. I see where they go. I see what they do, and I know this for a fact. Amen. They get satisfied, amen, with the fatness of God's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They get satisfied with the fatness of God's house. Boy, I tell you, by by the time he got to that verse of Scripture, I'm sure the adrenaline was already kicking in and his faith was already building and he was already getting encouragement. Amen. Just meditating on God and thinking about God. and Amen. After all that he had seen going on in the world around him and describing all that for us. Amen. Now he's getting discouraged or encouraged tonight. Amen. Thinking about, amen, how good God is. Hallelujah. Amen. And how the saints of God, amen, get satisfied in the house of fatness amen now I'm not preaching about a bird house a dog house a cat house a chicken house a play house a tree house a club house a farm house a lake house a green house an outhouse amen a jail house a drug house a warehouse a white house a court house a school house a waffle house a huddle house a pancake house a town house or a pit house I'm not even preaching about my house or your house tonight I'm talking about the house of God, hallelujah, where you and I go and attend church, the house of God where you and I go and take our families, amen, so that we can be fed, amen, with the word of God, hallelujah, amen, and find strength in the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. You know what that is? That's the fat house. Somebody say the fat house. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where there's plenty for anybody that's hungry. There should be plenty in the house of God for anybody that comes hungry and thirsty. Hallelujah. And there will be if we'll all contribute. There will be if we'll all do our part. We'll pray if we'll fast, if we'll, amen, come and worship and focus our mind and attention, amen, on what's being said and preached in the house of God. In a generation... In a generation of vegetarians and vegans and all types of strange diets going on and all of these finicky eaters, <laughs> the Word of God says this. Matthew 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Amen. I heard a preacher preach one time, Tyler's message, God takes care of his regular customers. Hallelujah. And God does take care of his regular regular customers, his regular saints of God that come to church. Amen. He takes care of us, don't he? Hallelujah. Amen. There's always somebody up here, amen, preaching the word of God to us. Hallelujah. 
Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Luke chapter 6 and verse 21 says it this way. Blessed are they that hunger now. He added the word now. Blessed are they that hunger now. Amen. For ye shall be filled. Did you come to church hungry tonight? John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Now, let's understand what Jesus is saying here. Amen. Blessed is he that hungereth, thirsteth after God, right? These other scriptures are saying, now Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger. That word hunger in that verse of scripture means famish or starve. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never famish. They will never starve. I I come to tell somebody tonight that God feeds his kids. God feeds his children. Hallelujah. If you serve God, God's going to feed you. He's going to nourish you. He's going to give you bread. He's going to give you meat. He's going to give you water when you're thirsty. Hallelujah. Amen. If you come to God tonight, amen, you will never starve or famish. Hallelujah. God feeds his children well. David saw that. And now, because he recorded it and it's in the Word of God now, we get to see that as well. Hallelujah. Thank God David recorded it. Amen. Psalms chapter 36 tonight. Praise God. We can see, amen, how that God can let us go to church. Amen. That our churches can be a house of fatness, a house of abundance, a house of plenty if we want it to be. Hallelujah. Or we can have a house of leanness. Praise God. You know, I'm I'm afraid that the finicky eating syndrome that seems to be going around this world, hallelujah, has taken, uh, has taken a spiritual side to it. Praise God. Uh, you know, people take their fork, and if they're a finicky eater, and they'll, they'll, they'll push their food around in their plate, and they may smell of it, or they may take a little bite of it, and then they'll push it around and push it around. They, just, they really don't want it, or either they're really not hungry, amen, or whatever. Um, and I'm afraid that's happening in the house of God. I'm afraid that people, amen, just, you know, listen, it can't be, it can't be steak and baked potato every time you come to church. Hallelujah. God's got different things. There's all kinds of things in the Word of God that we got to preach to y'all, amen, to make sure that y'all are saved. Hallelujah. So we got to try to cover, amen, all kinds of bases here, amen, trying to help every one of us to get to heaven, right? So it always, you know, if your pet subject is the book of Revelation. Amen. We can't preach from the book of Revelation every time you come to church. Amen. If if your pet subject is uh, whatever it might be, hallelujah, uh, that don't mean that I'm going to preach on that particular subject every time you come to church. Hallelujah. We'll get around to it sooner or later. Hallelujah. We'll get there eventually. Amen. When God deals with our heart about that subject or whatever, hallelujah. But God has a buffet of food. And we need it all. We need it all. I'm not a picky eater. I'm not a finicky eater. There are a few things that I won't eat. I won't eat escargot. I'm not going to eat nothing that's crawling on the ground a few days ago, you know. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, there's not a whole lot I won't eat. I mean, I'm sure I could find a few other things. There's some things I really don't like. You know, I, I don't know how to describe what I want to say here. It's almost that we've come to a place of being so spoiled and that we're bringing our children to a place of being so spoiled that if we go somewhere and eat, amen, and if it's not prepared exactly the way that we like for it to be prepared, we won't even touch it. I mean, if it's not exactly if, if the mashed potatoes are, are not just exactly like mama makes them at home or, or just exactly the way you like them, then they'll just sit there on the plate and won't get eaten. Hallelujah. 
You know, you know what? I, I, I can eat food if it ain't prepared exactly like I like it. Amen. I can eat it just about as well as I can. Amen. Food that is prepared exactly like I like it. Hallelujah. Why are you saying that, Brother Rev? Because I love to eat. And I don't like to pay a lot of money and go home hungry. So I'll eat it. I'll eat yours if you don't want it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hallelujah. There's an abundance in the house of God when we pray, when we all pray, when we all come, when we all sing, when we all worship, when we all get behind the man of God. We all bring our little part, our, we contribute to, amen, the, the, the buffet, or we contribute to the potluck dinner, or ever how you want to consider this thing tonight. Praise God. We all contribute. Don't come empty-handed. Don't come empty-handed. Hallelujah. Bring something. Bring a desire to, to pray. Bring a desire, amen, to sing. Bring a desire to worship. Hallelujah. Bring a desire, amen, to sit and hear the man of God preach without being all finicky and all anxious about, why well, God, how long is he going to preach? When is he going to let us go? Get that out of your head. Come to church and just eat. Hallelujah. I know as a kid, you know, we were not rich folks. We weren't even close to middle. We weren't even close to middle class folks. Praise God! And uh, mom, 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 my mom and daddy, they 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 uh, did the best that they could to feed us, and they did a good job at it. They could stretch stuff and meals and stuff, and uh, you know. But I can't say I can't say that I never went to bed hungry, because you know at times we 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 always basically always had something to eat, but. You know, it wasn't always a lot to eat. So there was times as a kid that I went to bed a little hungry. Uh, you know how kids are. They're out there running around the yard doing things. And I know how my grandkids are if they are here tonight. I don't even know if they're here tonight. But I know how my grandkids are. Some of my grandkids are here tonight. Even little, even even the girls. <laughs> Hallelujah. At times, them girls, boy, they, them boys and girls, they, they come over to my house. And, man, they come in the door looking for something to eat. Praise God. And then they find them something to eat, and they sit down and eat it, and 15 minutes later looking for something else to eat. And then, hey, man, 15 minutes later looking for something else to eat. Well, all kids are hungry all the time, right? <laughs> hey, man, but when I was a kid, hey, man, I got hungry, but I didn't have all them snacks. I didn't have popcorn and crackers and all that other stuff, hey, man, to just snack on any time that I wanted it. Praise God. Hallelujah, like children do today. Amen. But uh, uh, one of the problems we have with this generation is that they are snacking so much when it comes to sitting down and eating a real meal, most of the time they're not hungry enough to eat the real food. They've snacked all through the day. Amen. They filled up on snacks and, you know, and junk and everything. Then they just will not sit down and eat a, uh, a healthy meal. Praise God at the end of the day. Praise God. Well, as a child, I had to go to bed hungry sometimes. Amen. As an adult, I can't say that. I, I guess the only time that I went to bed hungry as an adult was when I chose to go to bed hungry as an adult because we basically, most of the time at least, always had food in the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know what? Amen. I don't want to ever leave the house of God hungry and feeling like God ain't ready to feed me or God's not wanting to feed me. God don't have anything to feed. His storehouse is full. There, there, there is no, you know, I, you know, we've all been in the grocery stores here lately, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to close. I'm in a talking mood, I guess. We've all been in the grocery stores, and, and, and we've seen the shelves kind of wiped out. It, it ain't just toilet paper and paper towels and stuff like that that shelves are empty. There's a lot of other stuff that ain't in there. Hey man, when you normally go into a grocery store and the shelves are full and the uh, and the produce department is full and you know you just go in there and get anything and everything you want. Now in the past several months, we've just had to go in there and pick and choose and try to get what we could. Amen. To make it through and thank God, God has provided for all of us. Praise God. And uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of why I'm saying all this. <laughs> uh, huh? No shortage. Yeah, there ain't no shortage in the house of God. There may be a shortage in the grocery store. Thank you, Brother Rowe. Hey, man, you got me back on track. There may be a shortage in the grocery store. There ain't no shortage in the house of God. The storehouse of God is full. Whatever you want tonight, you can have it. You can eat it. You can, amen, take a basket full home with you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. And enjoy it tomorrow. Hallelujah. 
Oh, yeah. God's house is a fat house. And I know that everybody here understands I'm talking about spiritually, right? So nobody's going to leave here offended. We're all understanding I'm talking about a spiritual fat house. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, we love you tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And uh, let's pray for the service on Sunday. Let's pray for Sister Jeanette that she can get past the pain of those broken ribs and be here in church. She was crying and weeping on the phone this evening. Amen. Wanting to be at church tonight, desiring to be at church tonight, and then put in a prayer request. Brother Mary, please, please pray that I can come to church Sunday. So we got a lot to pray about. We got a lot to think about. We got a lot, amen, to come in here on Sunday morning to worship God about. Come and dine. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. You can feast at his table all the time. Come on. I want us to stand tonight together and I want us to lift our hands to the Lord. And if you're if you're here tonight and I hadn't preached in an in an area where you needed me to preach in tonight, hallelujah, then I apologize to you. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, whatever area you need God in, amen, God will move in that area. Hallelujah. Whatever, uh, you know, I, I, can't, I can't preach to everybody's needs. There's probably a hundred, a hundred maybe people in here tonight. Everybody's got different needs. I can't preach it. Amen. Everybody's area at the same time. You just got to come back. You got to get what you can tonight, and then you got to come back. Hallelujah. But you also got to know that whatever your need is tonight, God wants to meet that need. Whatever your trouble is tonight, God wants to help you through that trouble. Whatever your hunger and thirst is tonight, God wants to feed you and give you drink tonight. I wonder if we could just lift our hands for just a moment tonight in closing. Hallelujah. Could we just lift our hands in closing here tonight and say, God, Lord, I want to go to a church of plenty. Not a lean house. Oh, uh, not a concentration camp where people are starving to death. Oh, God, no, that's not that's not the kind of church I want to go to, God. I want to go to a church where the food is plentiful. The water is plentiful. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God, and you're always there waiting on me, God. Hallelujah. To fill my cup with water, to fill my plate with food, God. Hallelujah. You're always there serving me. You're always there, hallelujah, providing for me. Oh, God, you're you're such a wonderful God. Oh, God, you're such a wonderful God tonight, hallelujah. You feed me when I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you. Oh, yes, Jesus, tonight, God, come on, somebody. Eat it the other day on my side, out of the Are you hungry tonight to reach out? A spiritual spoon and a, a spiritual fork tonight, for hallelujah, and begin to dine on, Thirsty amen, the presence of God you. here tonight, hallelujah. Let your living oh, water hallelujah, the song says, come and dine tonight. Through and through. Hallelujah, I'm Jesus said, come and dine tonight. You. The Holy Ghost said, come and dine tonight, hallelujah. There's plenty for everybody. There's plenty for anybody. I'm thirsty for you. Enjoy the bread of life tonight. Enjoy the water of life tonight. Hallelujah. Enjoy the food that God has prepared for you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. taste of heaven's manner tonight, God. Oh, God, I want it to fall fresh for me every day.
every day that I live. I want fresh manna from heaven. For you. Hallelujah, God. Oh, somebody. Somebody needs to know tonight that God's here tonight to feed you. He's here to give you spiritual water to restore you tonight. Oh, God. Is anybody hungry? Is anybody hungry here tonight? Hallelujah. Holy Ghost tonight. deserves better than that. Come on. Hallelujah. We're giving the King of kings and the Lord of lords a hand clap of praise here tonight. Yeah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Amen. Thank God I came to church tonight on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. I came to church and God you fed me your word. You gave me drink from your spirit. Drink from your fountain. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For providing for your children tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for listening. 
God bless you. You're dismissed tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.